Practicing golf at home is a good way to take your game to the next level, and there are plenty of kits out there for building a golf enclosure or a simulator at home, but they can be pretty expensive. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you five different ways that you can make a golf enclosure at home on a budget. Getting us started is this awesome build from Michael. And all the projects that we're gonna look at utilize three quarter inch electrical conduit, which is a product or material you can get off the shelf at Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, Menards, places like that. And then a connector system called Maker Pipe that allows you to build things with EMT conduit. In this first project from Michael, you can see He's got a, a nice area. It must be like a finished basement or something. And basically, he built an enclosure that is offset from the wall. And well, he hasn't finished the enclosure yet. He's just built the frame for the impact screen, as you can see here. And he wanted to point out that the putting green here is <laughs> just something he had here in place. He's not actually hitting or driving off of this. So he wanted to point that out. But basically, this frame is pretty awesome. You can see here it's offset from the wall, which is a really good idea. If you're, you know, smacking the ball up against the impact screen, you don't want it to put holes in the drywall if you're in like a finished basement or something like that. And the way he achieved that was pretty clever using the Maker Pipe 90 degree connector, which is this three-way connection. I think there's a good photo of it here. You can see where basically he made the main rectangle using a 90 degree connector in the corner uh, of each of the four corners. And this allowed him to have the vertical pipe and then the top and bottom horizontal pipe, just making that rectangle. And then it also allowed him to have this offset pipe that runs to the back wall and you know kind of keeps the screen off the wall. And then you can see here that he secured the uh, the impact screen to the frame using ball bungees, where, which are inexpensive and work great for stuff like this. And uh, it's a really great project. You can see he also added an angled pipe in the front using the Maker Pipe adjustable angle connector uh, to add this kind of support brace on the front. And you can add a rubber pipe foot or something like that if you're in an area like this where you want to protect the floors. This is really awesome. And then he said he's just going to finish up the build by wrapping the metal pipe with um, pipe insulation. You can get off the shelf or you could also use pool noodles. Uh, it's another great kind of inexpensive uh, option to add just kind of a soft barrier on the pipe. So if the ball hits it, it doesn't ricochet all over your basement, uh, which is cool. And then, of course, you could add some netting. You could extend this frame uh, and add netting if you want. We'll look at some builds that do that. But this is really cool from Michael. And check out his community post, which will be linked down below, or you can just screenshot this. He actually shared the measurements for each of the cuts and the quantity of connectors that he used to build this, which is awesome. Thanks so much, Michael, for sharing that. Next up is a project from John. And you can see here, this is a similar in fact, he actually used very uh, similar connectors. He used the 90 degree connector again, instead of this time, instead of going you know, against the back wall to create that offset, he used them in the corners to basically create uh, this box here, kind of enclosure that you are probably familiar with if you've looked at kits and different things like that. Basically, it just creates this, this uh, you know, kind of box shape and it's open on the front. So we use 90 degree connectors in the corner uh, down here on this side, same thing up top and then up here because he's connecting three pipes together and that's where you would use a 90. But down here, there's no pipe running from side to side. So he used a T connector down here for this connection uh, from Maker Pipe, and uh, I'll link each of these down below so you can check them out. But he used a T connector there uh, to keep this front part open. And then very similarly, you can see he secured the uh, material, the impact screen with ball bungees. And it's a pretty simple frame. You know, it's just, you know, eight connectors, just, uh, you know, six 90s and two T connectors to make this really easy, uh, very few connectors. And uh, then you can just customize the dimensions of the conduit to match whatever dimensions of your impact screen, which is really cool. And then you can see here that he also added the uh, foam insulation to the pipes as well. Like I said, just creates a good barrier. So, <laughs> you know, the ball doesn't ricochet everywhere. That's really cool. And very similar to that one is this one from Chris. And this one is all finished in place. You can see he's got the the greenery down, the carpet underneath there, which is awesome. He's got the full enclosure set up. And it might look like the enclosure is a part, or the netting is a part of the actual impact screen frame, but he's got that mounted to uh, the ceiling in his garage. And he didn't say whether he used conduit uh, and connectors for this part, but you could. You know, you could use the, the flange that Maker Pipe makes to mount this to your wall, and then you can have your netting attached there. But we can see that it's the same design as John's for this enclosure. 
basically just using T connectors down here in the front again to leave this part open. Then he's got 90 degree connectors in the rest of the corners uh, to kind of create this box shape. And then he's got the you know impact screen secured. This time it looks like Velcro straps, which is a good option. Uh, you know, if you want to be able to take it down easily, uh, this is, looks like it's in his garage. So, you know, if you want to move this and get this out of the way, you could do that. And we can see we've got the uh, pipe insulation again. But then what's cool about this one is we can see he's got casters on the front uh, legs here. And I imagine on the back as well. The way the connectors are designed, there's a, a through connection in the middle of the 90 and then the top part of the T connector, which means if you have them oriented the way he does, you can add casters to the bottom and you could roll this around. So that could be a game changer if you want to set this up in your garage for the weekend. You know, it starts raining and you want to practice at home. You could roll this into place and then put up your nets and then you can move it out of the way if you need to use your garage the rest of the week, which is super cool. So that's a really uh, great design. Like I said, just six or sorry, eight connectors total for that and then the the casters on there and then you just customize the dimensions and cut conduit with just a couple of hand tools just a marker and tape measure to mark the measurements and then a handheld pipe and tube cutter to cut it works out great and uh, really easy to put together and then a five millimeter hex wrench for the the maker pipe connector so you could achieve this pretty easily in a weekend uh you know with just a few hand tools and just you know some calculating some measurements is just about it super cool and then this next one we have is from josh and this one is very similar and in, in the first one that we saw, except this one is a little bit different because it's mounted directly to the wall. And here's a good shot of the frame. Very simple. He's using just two 90 degree connectors for this main frame here with the vertical on each side. And then he's got the horizontal pipe. And then the same thing, the same technique that we saw in the first one to create that offset from the wall. Just the 90 degree connector facing the wall with this offset pipe here. But then we can see this is in place using the maker pipe flanges that I mentioned earlier. He's just got those bolted to the wall in a few different places here. And then he's got, you know, T connectors down here grabbing onto the frame to hold it. And then like we saw in that previous picture, he's got the 90s up here. And this again is just four, eight connectors total, just two T's two 90s, and then four flanges to bolt this thing to the wall. And then we can see here it is in place using ball bungees to secure the impact screen to the framework. Again, I think that's ball bungees. Yeah, you see them. I can see the ball bungees on there, uh, which, you know, like I said, it's just a really great option. You could, of course, use zip ties or, like I said, Velcro straps. But ball bungees work really awesome, and they're pretty easy to take off if you ever need to. So that's awesome. And then we can see in this first photo, it looks like he added some foam insulation, a great idea for all simulators out there. And then he also added some bracing. I don't know if he built this and then decided it needed more bracing or if he planned this from the get-go. He didn't really say. But basically, he just used the maker pipe adjustable angle connector to grab onto the frame. And then that goes up to an adjustable angle maker pipe flange that's bolted to the ceiling. And that just provides some more bracing there. And actually, he may not have even done that for bracing. He might have done that to hold the netting in place. So you could attach the netting there and then have it you know, back behind you somewhere. Um, you know, bolted to something else uh, on the back wall or on the ceiling. Maybe that's why I did that. I'm not really sure, but because I don't really think you would need that extra bracing if it's bolted to the wall in this way. Um, but, but yeah, it could be bracing or it could be for the netting. Not really sure, but really great idea nonetheless and uh, an awesome impact screen frame. So thanks so much for sharing that. Last but not least, we're going outside for this one. This comes from Gil. And you can see this one is kind of similar to the designs we've been looking at, except this one is a lot wider and this is... <laughs> Is not a uh, cat a cat enclosure, even though it looks like it. Uh, uh, it's got 90 degree connectors we can see uh, in the back. So he's making basically the same box design that we've seen from the other builders, except he used a little different uh, technique for this. So basically he's got 90s in the corners in the back. So four of those. And then instead of this being like a short you know, enclosure that we saw, kind of a wall, he's got this extending out pretty far to actually create a full-on cube enclosure that's, uh, you know, pretty deep uh, and allows him, I think he said he's using this as a backyard driving range, so that makes sense uh, to have this deep with the netting there. But then he added some bracing. Now he, I thought he used the Maker Pipe 45 degree connector or the adjustable angle connector, which you could do, but I think to save some money, he actually just drilled through the conduit, uh, both in the brace and on this back pipe here, and then just bolted through the conduit 
uh, on both and then kind of bolted them together that way, which is a unique idea and a good way to save some money. And then you can see he's got a T-connector uh, down here like we saw from some of the other builds. He's using T-connector back here to add this cross uh, brace that goes from side to side. And then up here, he is using T-connectors also. So he's got this pipe running from the back 90, and it goes all the way up to the front, and then a T-connector grabs onto it, and it still extends out. And then he's got a T-connector grabbing on there that sends the pipe to the other side. And of course, the whole thing is mirrored on the other side and just looks fantastic. It's covered with the insulation. He's got a really nice picturesque backyard here with the sun setting and everything. Really cool. He's got the netting in place. He didn't really say where he got the netting, um, but you know, you could find that for like one of the kits out there that's kind of expensive. You could probably find the netting separate and then just add it to your DIY frame uh, and, and save some money that way. You can see here he's got a cover over the screen, and uh, if you need you know, to convince somebody to, <laughs> that you want to build this in your backyard, you could say this doubles as an outdoor projector screen frame for outdoor family movie nights. So awesome builds from the community. These will all be linked down below. And if you have any questions in building your own impact screen frame or enclosure, definitely reach out to us. You can call MakerPipe directly, and we'll be happy to help you. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you in the next one.